Hello! Once again, it's time for us to spend a few moments together looking at God's Word and reaching out to Him where we can always find strength, support, encouragement for the day. All that we need comes from our Heavenly Father and we can turn to Him. I was thinking today about the ocean and I was talking to someone yesterday about uh, a recent trip they had down to the panhandle of Florida and uh, I was a little jealous of the time they got to spend just looking at the water. I'm always struck by the vastness of the ocean. Vastness, is that a word? Uh, I guess it is now. The immensity of all that water and being able to look and, and just as far as the eye can see, nothing but wave after wave rolling in. I find it mesmerizing and beautiful and incredible. It, uh, there's something about moments like that that seem to just transcend everyday life, to make us think, wow, there's got to be something more out there. I get the same feeling sometimes from a tall mountain over, overlooking a valley or, or a night sky where the night is clear and you look up, there's no, not a single cloud and the stars are as bright, there's no light pollution, but you, so, so you can see the vast immensity of space. And in moments like that, it's the same feeling that, God, you are amazing and there must be so much more that's out there. There's a famous quote by uh, the old English poet and playwright Robert Browning. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. He was fairly prolific through the 1800s. Uh, Robert Browning wrote a poem called uh, uh, Andrea del Sarto. And uh, that's about uh, Andrea del Sarto was a famed Renaissance painter in the 1500s. And uh, several of Browning's works, he... Uh, he uh, looks through the lens of a painter. And so, so he has this famous poem, but there's a line from it that has probably eclipsed the rest of that poem. The line has continued to today, and maybe you've heard this phrase before, though for many the poem is long forgotten. But in the midst of his poem, Andrea del Sarto, Robert Browning says this. He says, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? It's an interesting thought. This idea that, that we should look beyond ourselves, that we should have a sense of ambition in, in, a, in a godly way, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of wanting to do better, a sense of wanting to do more for the good of those around us. And he says, or what's a heaven for? The idea that there's more to this life than this life, that there's something beyond, that there's something that far exceeds even the wonder of our human existence, a time that comes in the next life as we stand in the presence of the Lord, that that is meant to be perhaps a chief aim for all of us to enjoy that moment between us and God above. It's with that thought in mind that I want to read the scripture for us today. Our uh, associate chaplain, Mary Myrink, um, sent me this as our daily scripture, and it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4. And in this chapter, the Apostle Paul talks about the human body, and he compares it to a tent. Listen to what he says here in verse 4. He writes, for while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. What's he saying? There's got to be more than just this physical experience. There's got to be something more. In fact, I groan and I long to put on my heavenly dwelling, um, to experience all the fullness of the eternal life that God offers us. You know, one of the number one questions we get from folks here at the village that have reached perhaps their final um, days and weeks, months, uh, that, that final season of life, they've lived long, fulfilling, contented lives, the question we often get from them is this, why am I still here? 
And it's not a despairing statement as much as it is a readiness, a longing for eternity, a longing for the life to come. Well, here's a truth for us today. No matter what you've been through in life, no matter what you feel like you're going through, even now in this moment, there is a heaven that awaits. And there is a God of heaven who lives with us in this moment that pours out eternal life, not just on the moment we die, but even now to all those who believe. He fills us with his presence. He fills us with his own life and hope in everything that's about heaven, where there is joy and contentment and peace and never-ending love. We are meant to have a glimpse of that even now. My encouragement to you today is to keep longing, keep learn, uh, keep yearning, keep reaching out for that eternal life that we are yet to walk into the full experience of. God has good things in store, and we can trust him. Between now and the day when we see him face to face, we can hold on tight to his presence, trusting in his care, knowing that even greater days are yet ahead. May that thought fill you with hope today. May we reach out and extend our grasp, our, our grasp toward the Lord and lock on to him with our faith, with our hope, with our devotion. In him, we find life. Would you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, thank you for this scripture that, that Mary Myring selected for us today. This reminder that there's more to life than our current experience. That even the best moments, Lord, are meant to be surpassed by the glories and wonders of the life to come. Fill us with that great hope as we put our trust in you. Lord, we choose to face today and the days to come with a smile, with the knowledge that where you are taking us, all of us who put our trust in Christ, Lord, that you are taking us to a greater reality full of even more wonder. Lord, help us to find moments, whether it be looking at the ocean or the stars, where it be maybe considering your goodness throughout our lives. Give us those moments when we are filled once again with the wonder of who you are. And with all our hearts, may we yearn for the fullness of your presence one day. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Let's keep our eyes looking up. There's goodness and grace and love ever to be found in the presence of the Lord. Here at Friendship Village, we're working hard to show you these videos three times a day. They start at 4.30 in the afternoon, repeating again at 8 o'clock at night, and then the following morning at 8 o'clock right here on Channel 900. You can always find them on your computer through the internet. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell in your search bar, and there on YouTube, you'll see lots and lots of videos there now. God bless you today. Keep looking up. We'll see you next time.